Hey everyone, Starthus here, back with the next video in my Daisy server hosting series. This time, I'll be going over the various files that make the expansion traders work. It's important to understand how these files work if you ever want to make your own custom trader, such as a black market. I'll be mentioning NPC traders in this video. If you want to use lockers or any other items, just replace NPC with whatever object you're using. In the description, I'll also have videos that go over how to set up the expansion traders, set up unlimited stock, and even use the DAISY editor. So there are seven files that we need to understand. On screen now is a list of the files and how I'll be referring to them during the video, as well as where the files are located. Let's look at the market settings JSON file first. Mainly, I want to highlight the sell price percent field. By default, this is set to 75 or 75%, which means that all items in your server will sell for 75% of what you paid for them. So if you paid $100 for an item and then go sell it, you'll get $75 for it. There are a lot more settings in this file, but those won't be covered in this video. Next is the trader zone JSON file. These lines define the center point of your trader zone. And this line defines the radius of that zone. Combined, these outline a sphere in which your trader NPCs must be located in so players can interact with them. For the buy price percentage, I suggest leaving this at 100. A scenario in which you may want to change this is if you're running a server event where you want to give discounted gear to everyone. Then you could come here and lower this for that trader zone. The sell price percentage is set at negative 1 by default, which means the sell percentage from the main market settings file is applied. Changing it here in this file will overwrite the main settings just for this trader zone. I won't be going over stock because I'm using unlimited stock. Next, the market JSON file. A better term for these might be category files. These files control the price and how much the trader has in stock. The init stock percentage determines the percent of stock that will be loaded to each of the traders when the server starts. Again, if you have unlimited stock enabled, this won't be used. The max price threshold is the highest price an item will ever be to buy. So if a trader is running low on this item, it will be closer to this price. The min price threshold is the lowest the price will ever be to buy the item. So if the trader has a full supply of this item, it will be closer to this price. If you want the buy price to always be the same, set both these to the same number. The sell price is controlled by the market setting file from earlier. These control how much stock there should be of each item, but again, we're set up for unlimited stock. Quantity refers to the item's fullness out of 100%. Negative 1 is the default though for completely full. So a water bottle set to negative 1 will be full. Same thing for a magazine set to negative 1, but it will only fill the magazine if your trader zone has enough ammo in stock. Since we're using unlimited stock, a magazine bot with this setting will be full. Attachments are pretty self explanatory. Here's the cars market file, and you can see the cars have applicable attachments. And then we have variants. If we look at the armbands market file, any trader that has this category, you would see an entry for each of these colors. We can take the class names of all these colors and then put them under the variants. And then remove the other entries. Then this will show a single item category that you can just pick a color from. This is a good way to consolidate the number of items in a category. Next is the trader JSON file. This file contains the currency the trader will accept and return to you during a transaction. It also contains the categories that the NPC will have when players interact with them. 
The categories are the file names of the market JSON files. Depending on which number is added to the end of a category, or an item in the section below, will control if a player can only buy or only sell items. Then we have the safe zone file. To ensure an area for your trader is safe, I would recommend setting these coordinates to the same as you set in your trader zone JSON file. Next is the trader.map file. This file holds information on the actual NPC assets the player will interact with. Each line should show a standard syntax. Here we have the aircraft belota.map file, which uses the expansion Judy NPC. It references the aircraft.json trader file. It's located here, and it has this gear. Finally, the object.map file. By default, this is what the expansion team uses to populate the game with their custom-built traders that come with the expansion mod. If you're using the DAISY editor to build your trader area, you can export a map file and then add it to this folder. I use DAISY editor files because at the time of this video, they allow me to actually delete world assets versus just adding them. The expansion.map files have the ability to remove items, but the DAISY editor has not added this feature yet. I want to close out by thanking all the folks over at the expansion team and the people in the Discord helping me validate all this information. If you've got any questions, drop a comment down below or head over to the expansion Discord. And if you can, hit that like button and consider subscribing. Thanks.